It was Disney's tentpole release of the 2022 holiday season, a fun and visually gorgeous pulp adventure that looked to be the studio's next animated classic. However, it ended up a spectacular flop, with opening weekend box office takings falling more than 50% behind expectations and the movie losing Disney an expected $150 million. Strange World's epic failure, however, likely could have been predicted. From poor Mark marketing and bad word of mouth, to Disney's struggle with original features and the science fiction genre in general, to a changed cinematic landscape in the post-pandemic world. Here's why Strange World became Disney Animation's biggest flop of all time. Strange World follows a family of explorers who set out on their most ambitious mission yet, finding themselves navigating an uncharted and treacherous land alongside a misfit crew of mercenaries and creatures. All the while, the three generations of clades find themselves at odds with one another, learning to settle their differences along the way. It's a movie that sounds incredibly Disney, full of fantasy and whimsy, with a huge focus on family and a whole bundle of heart. It's a gorgeous gorgeously animated flick, one of Disney animation's most effervescent in recent memory and also sports a heavyweight cast with Jake Gyllenhaal, Dennis Quaid, Gabrielle Union and Lucy Liu. With direction from veteran Disney filmmaker Don Hall, the director behind Big Hero 6 and Raya and the Last Dragon. However, upon release, the movie crashed and burned before it could even take off. For the last two decades, Disney has designated their coveted end of year holiday release slot to that year's tentpole from Walt Disney Animation. Setting Strange World for a Thanksgiving weekend 2022 release, it would be fair to think that Disney had a sure thing on their hands. In fact, industry pundits predicted it would pull in $40 million in its five-day opening weekend. Tepid numbers to begin with, but a reasonable opening in a post-pandemic world. However, the movie only managed a measly $18.6 million in its domestic North American opening. To compare, 2021's Encanto walked away with $40 million in the same weekend, while 2019's pre-pandemic Frozen 2 2 took home 125 million. Strange World's opening was, to put it nicely, appalling, with Hollywood trade paper Variety calling it a catastrophic result, and The Hollywood Reporter noting it was the worst opening for a Disney animation Thanksgiving title in modern times. On the contrary, even taking inflation into account, the only other Disney film that had a worse November opening was Fantasia, which opened on November 13, 1940, in a single theater in New York City. Wrapping its global box office run with less than $75 million, industry reports estimate the movie to have lost the studio between $100 and $150 million. Again, to put it into perspective, globally, Encanto, also considered a box office failure, wrapped with $257 million, and Frozen 2 just shy of $1.5 billion. At the height of the pandemic in March of 2021, Raya and the Last Dragon even managed to scrape away with a global $130.4 million, despite opening in half the number of theatres and also launching on Disney Plus day and date, possibly taking in an additional $30 plus million. Strange World's numbers don't just pale in comparison to these movies, but also in comparison to Disney's two previous biggest flops of all time. 2002's Treasure Planet, another sci-fi adventure pulp which grossed $110 million globally on a $140 million budget, and 1985's The Black Cauldron, a dark fantasy horror which grossed $21 million globally on a $44 million budget. So how did this happen? The first offender we'll talk about is the movie's marketing. To gauge an audience reaction, I called out to my followers to share their experience with the film's marketing campaign. Considered by many to be a poultry campaign, Disney seemingly put a lower than usual effort into advertising the film. And what was put out there was considered by some to be mediocre. Disney kicked off Strange World's campaign in December 2021 with a first look concept and synopsis reveal. A teaser trailer followed six months later in June 2022 with two more dropping in September and October.
October 2022, respectively. The rollout of posters occurred across the same period, and while the first was considered gorgeous, one could easily see their rapidly declining quality. While this is a normal rollout, many noted the marketing's lacklustre, formulaic and uninteresting nature. There's also the nature of how much Disney pushed the marketing. Of almost 2,500 followers surveyed across my platforms, a whopping 90% voted that they didn't see much advertising, with quite a few saying they only saw it in the weeks or days preceding the movie's release, while dozens noted they didn't see anything at all. Numerous people shared their shock in discovering the movie had already hit theatres upon checking local listings, with some assuming it had been delayed given their lack of exposure. Others were shocked to suddenly see it land on Disney+, Plus, having missed its theatrical run altogether. This all points to a smaller than usual campaign push or algorithmic spread. There were of course those more in tune with the cinematic landscape who saw an abundance of it. I personally saw quite a lot, but admittedly, it's my passion and job to keep an eye on these things. That said, I too felt underwhelmed by both the marketing and the look of the movie itself outside of the first looks. In fact, for the first time in recent memory regarding a Disney animated release, I didn't even bother to watch it until it hit home media, after I missed my media screening for personal reasons. When I finally did get around to it, I wasn't all that impressed, finding it a well-crafted but insanely mediocre and generic Disney flick. It's also worth noting the insanely measly selection of merchandise Disney released for Strange World, with the official Disney shop only selling a selection of 12 mediocre items, and many reports of the film having absolutely no presence in Disney parks. Compare this to the thousands of items and literal micro shops available for Frozen and Encanto. It's unknown why the studio seemingly put lesser effort and presumably smaller budget into Strange World's campaign, in terms of both spread and quality. Whatever the reasoning, it's my understanding that numerous teams within the Disney camp even felt frustrated by the marketing and possible lack of studio support on the movie, something they felt hampered its ability to to succeed. It's possible that Disney, knowing they had a turkey on their hands, simply decided to give it a soft push. Many commentators and Disney fans also speculated that the movie, featuring Disney's first openly gay lead, may have even led the studio, who've not had the best track record of LGBTQ representation, to bury it, possibly shying away from controversy from a certain subset of the audience. Much like that which arose over the very brief same-sex kiss in the same year's Lightyear from Pixar. Perhaps not so coincidentally, Strange World also landed in the same year Disney came under fire for its handling of Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill. Self-sabotage doesn't really seem likely, particularly on a major project like this, but it can and does happen, and it's happening more and more regularly. Warner Discovery, anybody? <laughs> With that, it's also quite simply that Disney just didn't know how to market the movie. It's no secret that over the last decade or so, Disney have favoured popular IP-focused films over more original fare, whether that be tentpoles from subsidiaries like Lucasfilm and Marvel, or their own slate of live-action remakes and blockbuster live-action sequels. Sequels have even run rampant across both Disney Animation and Pixar in more recent years. Despite many crying Disney's live-action remakes, they have proven to be some of the studio's most lucrative movies, while original features, which the same crowd usually begs for more of in the same breath, have consistently tanked. For example, the period of 2015 to 2019 saw Disney make over $1 billion each on live-action remakes of Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King and Aladdin, also coming very close to clearing that number on The Jungle Book. While the same period saw a slew of originals wildly underperform or straight up bomb completely, The Nutcracker and The Four Realms and A Wrinkle in Time made less than $200 million a piece, while Million Dollar Arm, McFarland USA and The Finest Hours made between $38 and $50 million, and Queen of Katwe not even $10.5 million. Admittedly, some remakes and reboots across this time also underperformed, such 
as Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, Dumbo, Christopher Robin and Mary Poppins Returns, though these all scraped in with between 200 and 500 million dollars. Following an obvious trend, the only place you'll now find live action Disney originals is as exclusive fodder on Disney Plus, some of which were demoted from planned theatrical releases. Live action remakes likewise expected to be lower performing have also found themselves dumped on streaming. The fact that Disney strives on IP based or well known sources is something that even Walt Disney recognised, employing several extravagant marketing tactics to help push potential underperformers or save potentially troubled productions. In one instance he commissioned a novelisation of Lady and the Tramp, the studio's first original feature animation which was published two years before the movie's 1955 release with a label reading the book the movie is based on. In another he built the Sleeping Beauty Castle in the middle of Disneyland which was set to open four years before the movie, even installing a walkthrough attraction of the story. In both cases Walt created the illusion of familiar IP and while Lady and the Tramp would go on to become the studio's then biggest success, nothing could save Sleeping Beauty, the studio's then biggest flop. Regardless it was these kinds of schemes that made Walt a marketing genius, an ingenuity that seems lost on today's teams who are seemingly scared to make such courageous moves. Similar lacklustre promotional campaigns were seen just over a decade ago. 2009's Princess and the Frog, meant to be the studio's grand return to hand drawn animation after four years of solely computer animated films, got off to a great start, but was crushed at the box office by the release of Avatar in its second week. However, a relatively large but mediocre marketing campaign couldn't save the movie, which ended up making only $271 million on a $100 and five million dollar budget. Meanwhile 2010's computer animated fairy tale Tangled took in a near 600 million dollars. When it came to 2011's Winnie the Pooh, Disney's reboot of a beloved franchise, it's been suspected that the studio either struggled with advertising a traditionally animated film in an era where computer animation was flourishing or simply couldn't be bothered to, quietly making the movie a scapegoat for the death of Disney hand drawn animation. Given a single plain trailer and a handful of boring posters, Pooh barely scraped in 50 million dollars and is currently Disney's last traditionally animated feature. That said, Disney has had more luck selling original animations in recent years, with movies like Moana, Zootopia and Wreck-It Ralph performing incredibly well. You could arguably include Tangled and The Frozens, though based on existing fairy tales. Previously it's been believed that simply being a Disney animation has been enough to drag in the audience, particularly if a princess or funny animal movie. So perhaps it wasn't the fact that strange World was original that saw the studio struggle with marketing, but the kind of movie it was. Interestingly, Strange World and Treasure Planet, again Disney's now second biggest flop ever, share a lot of DNA. Both are pulp science fiction adventures with grand complex concepts and themes, which throw back to classic literature of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Likewise the same could be said for the studio's 2001 animation Atlantis The Lost Empire, which actually preceded Treasure Planet and likewise failed to perform. Form. Then president of Walt Disney feature animation Thomas Schumacher notably said it seemed like a good idea at the time to not do a sweet fairy tale, but we missed. 2007's Meet the Robinsons, the studio's second fully computer animated feature and a more traditional sci-fi fantasy absolutely bombed at the box office, while Pixar's 2022 effort Lightyear also flopped enormously, leading to one of Disney's greatest ever upsets. However with a concept considered too confusing for much of the audience amongst a number of other factors, this too had many bubbling reasons for failure. There are animated outliers however, such as traditionally animated favourite 2002's Lilo and Stitch, the studio's first fully computer animated movie 2005's Chicken Little and Miley Cyrus and John Travolta Stara 2008's Bolt. Though there 
there is a clear difference between their cutesy nature and the harder sci-fi pulpy nature of these others. Attempting to pull off this kind of pulp sci-fi after the spectacular failures that were Treasure Planet and Atlantis was an incredibly bold, brazen and perhaps brainless move from Disney. Much like these two, it'll be interesting to see if, in later decades, Strange World picks up the same kind of cult following and championing. Disney hasn't necessarily had trouble with science fiction throughout their history. Their very first, 1954's adaptation of Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, their second fully live action feature, was an enormous hit, making almost six times its budget at the box office. This success was followed by a string of science fiction fantasy live actions, which performed relatively well. 1961's The Absent-Minded Professor and its 1963 sequel Son of Flubber, the Dexter Riley trilogy between 1969 and 1975, 1976's Freaky Friday, and a pair of Witch Mountain movies in 1975 and 1978. Various remakes across the 1990s and early 2000s also proved lucrative. While the 1990s spawned the popular Honey I Shrunk the Kids franchise with three movies and a series, two major exceptions from this period were, of course, 1982's Tron, which utilised state-of-the-art computer graphics and saw mild success at the box office, though is often heralded a flop, and 1979's clear failure, The Black Hole, the studio's attempt to ride on the back of the Star Wars hype train. Both movies are notably darker and harder in their sci-fi spin. Things we've established do not go hand in hand with the Disney audiences want or expect. More recently, the studio has found a larger struggle with the genre. 2010's Tron sequel, Tron Legacy, fell far short of expectations, with Disney hoping on a $1 billion taking akin to their then biggest franchise, Pirates of the Caribbean. 2015's Tomorrowland likewise failed to draw crowds, even with George Clooney at the helm. Of course, there was also 2018's A Wrinkle in Time, a confuddled, overblown mess which lost the studio almost $150 million. Unless we count 2009's Witch Mountain reboot Race to Witch Mountain starring Dwayne Johnson, which was deemed a success despite only making $106 million at the box office, it's interesting to see that in recent history, Disney has barely had a single sci-fi success outside of the Star Wars sequels, the Marvel Cinematic Universe films, WALL-E, and Avatar The Way of Water, notably all films from subsidiary studios and most from proven IP. Of course, outside of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, Pulp Adventures haven't performed all that well either for Disney, with 1991's The Rocketeer hugely underperforming, despite going on to be a cult favourite. And more recently, 2010's Prince of Persia, 2012's John Carter, another double whammy sci-fi pulp, and 2013's The Lone Ranger, all bombing massively, after likewise attempting to capture a pirates-like magic. The latter two, in fact, flopped so spectacularly that they joined Tomorrowland amongst the biggest flops in Hollywood history, certainly helping to steer Disney's direction forward. 2021's Fantastic Jungle Cruise is also a notable pulp adventure flop from the studio, though landing right in the middle of the COVID pandemic, one wonders how it would have performed in the pre-pandemic era. It's clear genre pieces in general are an incredible risk for Disney, whose audiences tend to prefer more fantastical fare. Throw in an original story and they've got one insanely difficult sell on their hands. With continued failures like these, it's no wonder Disney rarely takes these risks anymore. And again, it's baffling why they did with Strange World. Another factor we do need to take into account is the current cinematic landscape 
landscape and the post-pandemic audience. With Hollywood going through a state of disarray for two whole years, it feels like cinema is only just getting back on its feet. Particularly with billion dollar box office successes like Top Gun Maverick, Avatar The Way of Water, Jurassic World Dominion and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness hitting cinemas in 2022. Of course, throughout this period, instead of continually delaying all their movies indefinitely, Disney chose, as many other studios did, to dump a bunch of them on streaming, either day and date with cinemas or exclusively. Some, like Jungle Cruise, Mulan and Marvel's Black Widow, were given a paid Disney Plus premiere access treatment, while others, like Pixar's Soul, Luca and Turning Red, were dumped for free. Plenty of controversy surrounded this release model, with many arguing that Disney was diminishing the art of animation as a throwaway commodity. Add on top of that, Disney's tendency to now dump their tentpole features on Disney Plus in as few as 45 days after their theatrical openings. It is quite possible that these models have had a major domino effect on audiences who no longer want to pay to take an entire family to see an animated film in the theater. If nothing else, constant delays during the pandemic certainly helped audiences to learn patience. So for many of those who did actually know of Strange World, it's possible that large percentages decided to instead wait it out for a free Disney Plus drop. Notably, Pixar's Lightyear, a film expected to take in a huge sum following the billion dollar triumphs of Toy Story 3 and 4, crashed and burned only months before Strange World did. Perhaps it was the audience confusion or the hard sci-fi angle, but for a franchise driven Disney movie to fail on this level is near unprecedented, even despite these opposing factors. To see both Strange World and Lightyear flop so hard in the same year, it's almost certain proof of a declining trend of audiences turning out to animated fare in a post-pandemic world. Also something perhaps more concrete is the fact that 2021's Thanksgiving animation Encanto failed to break even at theatres, but gained an enormous commercial success after it hit Disney Plus that Christmas for free. At the end of the day, Strange World has so many factors working against it, but one must wonder if the reason it did so poorly is much, much simpler. Perhaps Strange World became Disney Animation's biggest flop of all time because simply, it's just not a great movie. At the time of this video, the film's Rotten Tomatoes audience score is a relatively middling 66%. Compare that to the 93% of Encanto, the 92% of Frozen 2, or even the 99% of 2022's smash hit Top Gun Maverick. Even more alarming, Strange World's B Cinema score is not just the lowest for a Disney animation release, but the lowest was for any major animation studio release ever. It seems that those few who bothered or remembered to see it on opening weekend left somewhat disappointed. And an average audience reaction of course leads to fewer repeat viewings and a less than great word of mouth, limiting a movie's ability to do better or at the very least keep its legs at the box office in succeeding weeks, neither of which Strange World could manage. Word of mouth is of course incredibly important after opening weekend and something that movies like Frozen, Tangled, Moana, and even, though delayed, Encanto had in spades. With all that said, Strange World remains one of Disney's most baffling endeavors, though one of its most obvious failures when everything's added up. If anything, this probably means we'll continue to see less experimentation from Disney in coming years, particularly when it comes to the animated form. In fact, as I'm making this video, Disney CEO Bob Iger has literally just announced a trio of animated sequels. In the same breath, he continued to assure investors that streaming is his number one priority. With that, will we see more animation find itself dumped unceremoniously onto Disney Plus, or will we simply see less ingenuity, less originality, and less magic? Or will we see all of the above? Only time 
will tell. And with that, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Disney's Strange World. How did you feel about the movie and why do you think it flopped so spectacularly? Join the conversation down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts.